Good evening, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our uh, third in a series of four adoption, se uh, sorry, gap sessions, information sessions, if you like. My name is Phil Weir. It's a pleasure to have you along tonight. Um, I would first of all like to begin by acknowledging traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today. Now, tonight we'll be hearing all about the adoption process. And it's a, it's a subject that we get a lot of questions about. And tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll be hearing from a doyen of the Greyhound adoption business, somebody who's who's been with GAP in Victoria almost since it began 26 years ago. There's uh, nobody better to talk about the wonderful breed and the process of adoption than, um, than, than Larissa Hubbard. We'll also be hearing tonight from an interview I did earlier uh, with um, Beryl Alcorn. Uh, Beryl is a first time greyhound adopter and uh, as she will uh, happily admit to, she is a senior and was looking for some uh, great companionship. Uh, we'll be hearing from her a little bit later on as well for some first-hand information about um, integrating a greyhound into your home. Before we get to that, however, a couple of things. If you have any questions at any stage throughout the, uh, the next hour or so, please... Um, put them in the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Leave them in there and we'll have Philippa come back to those a little bit later on tonight and address your questions as they come up. Please keep your mute on or unmute yourself, which is usually in a Zoom meeting what we're telling people to hear on mute. If you could stay on mute for the early part, please, so we don't get far too many audio signals coming across the top of each other. This presentation is also being recorded and it'll be emailed out to everybody in the next few days. But remember, if you do have any questions as we go along, please put them in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll come back to them later. Without any further ado, possibly the greatest a greyhound adoption legend possibly on the planet. And I mean that most sincerely. Please welcome Larissa Hubbard. Oh, thank you, Phil. I'm a bit embarrassed now. <laughs> and welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming along tonight. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about GAP, um, what we are and what we do, and then I'm going to have a chat about our adoption process. And then, as Phil touched on at the end of this, um, either myself or one of my adoption team who are also online um, will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So first of all, what is GAP? Um, so GAP, or Greyhound Adoption Program, uh, we were started 26 years ago by two vet nurses out at the Sandown Vet Clinic in Springvale. Um, about 18 months after it started, Greyhound Racing Victoria brought, brought the program in-house um, and has been managing it ever since uh, as part of our commitment to providing retirement opportunities for every Greyhound in, in Victoria. We usually have uh, between two and 300 greyhounds in our care at any one time. So we're a really large organisation. Uh, we are fully funded by, the, by Greyhound Racing Victoria. So we are an integral part of the racing industry here. Uh, there's no other organisation in Australia who rehomes as many dogs of a single breed as we do. So we know greyhounds, they're our passion. We don't know much about chihuahuas or terriers or anything like that, but we know a whole lot about greyhounds. So we live and breathe greyhounds. All our staff are, are long-termers. Um, they're all really passionate about what we do. We all work at GAP because we love the dogs um, and we want to see them in, into fabulous homes. Um, because all we do is rehome greyhounds, we're highly knowledgeable about the breed. We're very experienced when it comes to placing the right dog in the right home, which is what's really important to us. And just a little bit about me. Um, so as Phil touched on, I've been with GAP for 24 years. Um, I've seen enormous growth of our program during that time. Uh, when I first started all those years ago, the most common questions we got were, um, but aren't greyhounds vicious and don't they need a lot of exercise? 
And now most people know what a gentle and placid dog they are. Um, with thanks to all of our volunteers who get out and, and promote the dogs at any opportunity that they can. I manage the behavioural and the adoption teams at GAP, which means I look after the dogs who enter the program and I look after the exit of the dogs out of our program. I've got a really dedicated team who work under me, who work really hard to make sure that every greyhound has an appropriate pathway through GAP and then into their forever home. Something we really pride ourselves on at GAP is that we, um, we always aim to be progressive. Uh, so we're always looking at ways that we can improve our adoption process for you um, and how we can manage, best manage the dogs that are in our care. Thanks, Tristan. So why adopt a greyhound? Greyhounds are really quirky dogs. Um, we often refer to them as lovable weirdos. Um, they're quite different to other breeds of dogs uh, and grand, greyhound adoptees are super enthusiastic about their hounds. Um, generally, greyhounds are really affectionate dogs. They love pets, but they can be quite aloof at first. So they do need to be allowed time to bond with their new family. But once they do, and once they start to come out of their shell, you'll see their funny and affectionate side. Uh, the boys as a rule are, are a little bit more affectionate than the girls. The boys are also larger than the girls and the girls are a little bit more self-contained. Greyhounds, uh, contrary to popular belief, are really low energy dogs. So they're a sprinter, which means that they get tired really quickly. A kilometre is a long walk for a greyhound. They can certainly do more if you want them to, but you do need to slowly build them up to it. Um, they, some people do use them as jogging companions as well, but again, you need to just slowly, slowly build them up to be able to do that. Uh, they often spend 23 hours a day sleeping. Uh, so if you're looking for a dog who will just lay around and be with you, a greyhound's likely your perfect companion. Generally, greyhounds adapt really well to pet life. While most of our dogs have never been in a home prior to being adopted, they usually adjust with ease. They're generally calm and sensible and a well-adjusted dog, and their rearing and handling in the racing environment really helps prepare them for a life off the track. Greyhounds are not good guard dogs. Uh, they often don't bark and they very rarely alarm bark. This means that they're more likely to lick an intruder to death, that is if they actually wake up. If you're looking for a guard dog, a greyhound is not the right dog for you. Something we're really um, always concerned about is allowing greyhounds off lead in public. It is illegal and dangerous for greyhounds to be off lead in public. They can run up to 70 kilometres an hour, which means if they take off, you have no hope of catching them. Uh, they also have no road sense whatsoever. Uh, so when they take off, they can injure themselves, other dogs or people if they collide with something at full speed. As with all sighthounds, they have a strong chase instinct. And if something moves quickly in front of them, like a leaf or a paper bag, they will chase it and they're very difficult, if not impossible, to recall. We don't condone letting greyhounds off lead in public. Uh, but there are some areas around called slipping tracks where you can safely allow your greyhound to run if you want to. Uh, they're nicely surfaced, which means they're quite safe for the dog. They're fully fenced. Uh, you pay a subscription and you'll be given a key so you can go along whenever you like. That being said, um, a lot of our adoptees do go, go to that effort and buy the key and take their greyhound along who just walks around um, and doesn't run. Honestly, they're quite happy with a walk around the block once a day. Thanks, Tristan. So how to adopt? Um, there's lots of different ways. So the very first thing to do is to submit an adoption application form through our website. It's a really straightforward process. We just ask you some basic questions um, which will help us place the right dog with you. Um, once that's been accepted um, by one of my team members, you'll receive an email confirmation so that you know we've got your application and it's, and it's all fine. If you live outside Victoria, hopefully everybody here is Victorian, but if you do live outside Victoria, please don't apply as we don't undertake interstate adoptions. Once you've put your application in and we've accepted it, the next step is to keep an eye on the website and phone us as soon as you see a dog that you'd like to meet. We pop the new dogs up on the website every Monday and Thursday at 11 o'clock. And if you're waiting for a cat tolerant dog, we always publish them first. So hop online at those times, refresh your page, and then call us as soon as you see somebody you would like to meet. If you can't, the phones tend to be really busy on those days at that time. 
if you can't get through, please don't leave a message, just keep trying. You will eventually get us and then we'll be able to help you. Um, once we've spoken to you and we've co confirmed that the dog that you're interested in would actually suit you, we'll make an appointment for you to meet that particular dog. Another thing you can do is just come along and meet some greyhounds. Um, so if you give us a call, um, we can arrange that for you. We have two kennel facilities. We have our established property, which is up at Seymour, which is an hour north of Melbourne. In addition to that, we've got a new facility at Tullamarine that we've been in since January. And that's proving really popular with adoptees because it's so much closer to town. We tend to house all of our dogs that are available for adoption at our Tullamarine facility. That being said, if you prefer to adopt from Seymour, we can relocate the dog back up there uh, if that suits you better. So we welcome visitors to either facility by appointment. We're open every day except for Sunday. Um, so if you'd like to come along and have a chat or just meet some dogs in general, give us a call. Adoption days. Um, so in addition um, to adopting from our kennels, we do every few months or so conduct what we call the adoption days. Um, they're generally held at a racetrack. They're really high paced, very fun events, uh, which we love, but they're not for everybody. So if you feel that um, you would prefer to take your time and have a sort of more, more relaxed experience, we would def definitely recommend coming along to the kennels instead. Um, but also don't forget every day is adoption day at our kennels. So you certainly don't have to wait for one of these specific events to adopt from us. Thanks, Tristan. So um, firstly, I'd just like to quickly touch on our um, ethos. So we practice what, what's known in the industry as open adoptions. What this means is that we start with the premise that there is no perfect dog owner. We won't ask you for references or to give up your firstborn child in order to get a dog from us. Instead, we aim to build open, trusting communication so that we can help you be the best greyhound owner you can be. We aim to support and not judge you. This allows us to adopt more greyhounds into great homes and it reduces the length of stay in our kennels, which therefore allows us to bring more dogs into our care. So once you've found a greyhound that you're interested in, you've given us a call. Um, our, one of our experienced team will have a look at your application and ask you some basic questions just to determine if we think it's a good match or not. If we don't think that particular dog is right for your home, then we'll suggest another dog for you who might suit instead. It's really important to us that we put the right dog in the right home because we want every adoption to be a success. Uh, if you have a cat, there can be a wait for the cat tolerant dogs. We find that around one in every 10 dogs that we test are cat tolerant and they're in high demand because lots of adoptees have got cats. This means that there can be quite a long wait of times for a dog who's suitable for your home. We really understand how frustrating it is and we wish we had a magic wand that we could wave to make them all cat tolerant, but unfortunately we don't. But we can promise you it's really worth the wait. We often get asked if greyhounds who have raced are more likely to be okay with, or less, sorry, less likely to be okay with cats, but we found no correlation between racing careers or non-racing careers as to if the dog is likely to be okay with cats or not. In fact, We've had some really successful race dogs who went on to live happily with cats and we've had many, many greyhounds with no racing career who are absolutely not safe around them. Holding dogs. Um, so because space in our kennels is limited, we can only hold dog, dogs for you for a week. So when you give us a call, um, we will hold, and, and if, if that dog is suitable for you, we will hold him for a week until you can come and meet him and, and see if you want to take him home or not. We do sometimes get requests from people asking us to hold their dogs for longer, often up to several months. But sadly, it's just impossible for us to do that. Uh, it's really not fair on the dog who would have to remain in, in the kennels for that length of time. And it also means that while we're holding that dog, we can't bring any new dogs into the program into that kennel. We know it can be really hard if you miss out on a dog that you've seen on a website that you've particularly fallen in, fallen in love with but we do bring in around 30 new dogs into our care each week. So there's always going to be a new dog for you to meet. With the meet and greets, um, almost as I mentioned earlier, almost all of our dogs that are ready for adoption are held at our telemarine facility to make it easier for you to come along and see. So once you've called us and been matched to a new dog, we'll ask you where you prefer to collect from, either telemarine or Seymour, and we'll make sure the dog's at that, that particular facility for you. 
We then send you out a booking email, which has all of the details of your upcoming appointment, as well as a whole lot of useful post-adoption care information attached to it, which will help you settle the dog into your home. We do ask that if you need to cancel your appointment for some reason, it's absolutely not a problem at all, but please do let us know. If people just simply don't show up, it's really upsetting for the staff as that dog's potentially missed out on, on other potential homes while we've been holding in for you. So just give us a call if you can't come along, it's not a problem. If you have another dog, we really encourage you to bring him or her along to the meeting because it's really important that the match is a good one, not just for you, but for your other animals as well. So we do like to introduce the Greyhound to your, your existing dog prior to you taking him home. Assuming all goes well at the meeting, we'll then process the adoption and your new Greyhound goes home with you on the day. Our adoption fee is $100, which we think is an absolute bargain. Um, all our dogs are desexed, they're vaccinated, they're microchipped and wormed. Uh, they also come with a lead, a collar and a coat. Thanks, Tristan. So what do you get with your adoption? Um, you'll get a muzzle. Now, legally, your greyhound doesn't have to wear a muzzle in public but we do recommend for a short period post adoption, while your greyhound is still getting used to other breeds of dogs and while you're getting used to your new greyhound, that you do pop a muzzle on when you go for a walk down the street. Um, the dogs are really used to wearing them, it doesn't bother them at all. Um, if you have a cat, it's particularly important that you muzzle the greyhound for the first couple of weeks um, when he comes home, when he's likely to come into contact with the cat. So each greyhound goes out with a muzzle, they also come with their own special lead and collar. So each of our greyhounds comes with his own martingale collar and each collar is uniquely numbered. This means that if your greyhound happens to escape and someone finds him, they'll give us a call and they'll say, hey, I found a greyhound with this collar number and we can get him home to you quickly without having to get the local council involved and his subsequent fines that you might face. The collars that our dogs come with are called a martingale collar. They're very safe and they're specifically designed for greyhounds and their slender necks. All our dogs also come with a coat because they do feel the cold. So they come with these, their own set of pajamas to help keep them warm, particularly in the winter. All of our greyhounds also will come with all of their various certificates. So their um, desexing certificate, their vaccination certificate, proof of microchipping, um, all of that sort of thing. Um, all of that paperwork is emailed out to you immediately post adoption unless you ad adopt from one of our adoption days, in which case it will be in the dog's pack on the day. Um, you'll also get his full health history from while he's been in our care, as well as any other medical forms that are re relevant to your particular dog. And unconditional love, of course. Once your greyhound has settled into your home, he will love you forever. They really are a very special dog. Prior to getting your greyhound home, um, you'll need a bed, um, ideally an indoor and an outdoor bed. For the outdoor beds, we recommend the raised trampoline style beds with some sort of a waterproof cover and a bowl, uh, sorry, a um, blanket on top of it. For an indoor bed, as long as it's soft, the greyhound will be happy. They're really not fussy. And invariably, you'll likely find them on your couch. Uh, for bowls, your dog will need a food and a couple of water bowls. The water bowls need to be non-spillable as some greyhounds do like to paddle in their water. So it's really important that you don't go out and leave him for the day in summer and and he plays in his water bowl and knocks it all over and has no access to water while you're gone. Most greyhounds, once they settle into the home, do really enjoy playing with toys, particularly toys that are soft and squeaky. It's completely fine to have these to play with and it won't awaken any sort of predatory streak in them. Um, they love playing with them usually. So, but do remember that some greyhounds um, don't like to share. So if you have another dog, you'll need to manage um, toys and any other high value items that they both might want. The other thing, of course, you're going to need when you bring your greyhound home is patience. So our dogs have never been in a home, but, or generally never been in a home before they adopted. So things like stairs, vacuum cleaners, televisions, they're all new experiences for the dogs. Even walking on polished floorboards or tiles can be challenging for the greyhound at first. That being said, they do generally adjust really quickly to their new environment, but please be patient with them over the first month or so. Our dogs aren't house trained, but they're kennel trained, which means they're used to being put outside regularly to go to the toilet. House training is rarely an issue with the dogs, but you can expect a few accidents at first while your greyhound gets used to your new, your new, new routine. 
Thanks, Tristan. So what to expect when you bring your new, home, new dog home? For some greyhounds, coming into a new home can literally be like landing on planet Mars. They don't understand what you're saying or how anything works, and it can be really overwhelming for them. Just be patient while they adjust, and we're always here to help support and guide you through the settling in process if you need us. But generally, they do adjust quickly and easily. We certainly recommend initially keeping their world small. So what that means is don't introduce him to a whole lot of new people in the first, first few days or the first week. Don't take him on big walks to lots of new places. Just allow him time to get used to you and your home with short little strolls around the block for the first week or so. Um, as I touched on before, house training um, is usually straightforward. Generally, greyhounds are very clean dogs and they prefer to toilet outside. But you can expect an accident or two at the start while they learn a new routine. If you have other animals, um, your greyhound will have been assessed with small dogs and possibly cats prior to adoption, but it's really unlikely that he's met anything like rabbits, chooks, farm animals, that sort of thing. Greyhounds have been bred for thousands of years to hunt and chase, so some animals can look like prey to them. We recommend taking introductions slowly and use the muzzle that you'll be provided with. If you do have other animals, our staff will help guide you and, show, and tell you how to do those introductions safely. So sleeping dogs. Greyhounds, as a rule, don't like being disturbed when they're laying down, even if they're awake. They may startle, snap or bite. For this reason, we always advise that if your greyhound is laying down, don't touch him. This is This is particularly important with children. Uh, and it's really important that kids are taught this as soon as the greyhound comes home. So if you want to touch your dog when he's laying down, we recommend standing back and calling him to you. So he has to stand up before you pat him. Over time, your greyhound uh, will change completely so that the dog that you adopted in six months time will be a completely different animal. There's lots of new experiences that he has to get used to when he goes to live in a new home. And while this can be overwhelming for some dogs, they do generally adjust really quickly. They're naturally quite a reserved dog with strangers, but if you give him time, he'll blossom into the quirky, lovable and affectionate dog we know him to be. Uh, Post-adoption support, we're always here if you need us. We aim to check in with each new adoptee around three days, three weeks, then three months post-adoption. But do we do ask that you reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns. We're always here for you and we want this adoption to work just as much as you do. We'll support you for the lifetime of the dog. Should the adoption fail for some reason, we will always take the dog back in our care. No questions asked. Thank you, Tristan. So we're going to have a quick chat about some common health issues. Greyhounds are generally a very robust and healthy dog, um, but there are some common health, uh, some health issues that are common to the breed. Um, so the first one is PANIS, which is an autoimmune eye condition. Uh, it's usually present by the time the dog is around two years of age. So if you adopt, adopt a dog from us without panis, it's unlikely but not impossible that he will develop it. It is very common and we always have one or two dogs available for adoption at any time with panis. It's really easy to manage but it does require lifelong treatment uh, with eye drops. They're really easy to administer but if you don't use the drops, the dog will go blind. So it is really important to keep treating him. Uh, greyhounds, uh, some greyhounds, sorry, don't have great teeth and it's really important to maintain their dental health. All of our dogs will have a dental before they're adopted so their teeth will be really nice and clean when you take him home. Big marrow bones are great for them to gnaw on to help keep their teeth clean and raw chicken frames are really good too, both for their teeth and their coats. Arthritis. This is me. Arthritis isn't something that's particularly common in the breed, um, but if you adopt a greyhound who's previously um, broken his leg, um, then it may become arthritic as he ages. If we're concerned that this might be an issue for one of our dogs, then we will adopt him with a course of special medication to help ease any discomfort that he might have. Heart murmurs are super common in greyhounds, but they're generally a very low grade and absolutely nothing that you need to worry about. Low grade heart murmurs require no medication and you just treat the dog as normal. If the greyhound does have a higher grade heart murmur, then he may potentially have something wrong with his heart. 
we will provide you with all the necessary medical information so that you can make an informed decision as to if you want to proceed with the adoption of that particular dog or not. Happy tail, um, like heart murmurs, is really common in greyhounds. Uh, as they such, have such a long, thin tail, and they do wag them a lot, they can hit the end of their tail and split them open, making them bleed. When they bleed, they bleed a lot, and the blood can go everywhere. It goes up your walls, onto your ceiling, and invariably across your face. However, it's really easy to treat, and it generally doesn't require a trip to the vet. Thanks, Tristan. And now we're throwing over to Phil. Thank you very much, Larissa. Uh, I love the, the happy tail thing. I With all of the dogs that I've had, uh, it's uh, watching that huge, long, thin tail go backwards and forwards and thinking, don't hit the corner of anything. Um, this is an interview that I, uh, I did uh, yesterday with uh, Beryl Alcorn. Now Beryl is, um, has just taken over the adoption, her first greyhound. Uh, um, I'll make some comments at the end of it. I think it's probably best to hear from Beryl herself. Let's hear from her. Let's, let's start at the beginning. Um, this is your first greyhound, I believe. Yes, it is. Uh, and what was it that that made you think that a greyhound might be a great option? I had some beautiful pets, as, as you can see, I'm a senior, so in my lifetime I've had quite a few beautiful pets. And I always said when we lost our last one, I thought, no, I can't stand the heartbreak again, that's it, you know. And my father was in aged care, and one of the carers would come in every day with her adopted greyhound, and um, to see how placid you know, the dog was with the oldies and how we just sat at their feet, never got in their way. And I always said, if I ever have another pet, that's what I'll have. Well, time passed and all of a sudden I've noticed in my area so many people walking greyhounds and I thought, oh, I should think about getting a pet. And I was actually over at this, uh, a leisure centre a few weeks ago and I was talking to some people in the spa and they were talking how they got a pet again and the difference it made and I thought yes I need to make that move and I need to do what I said I was going to do and make some inquiries about a greyhound and honestly it's as I said I've had some wonderful pets and I won't say one's better than the other but I'm just so impressed with you know Cannon he's just the most beautiful animal and I'd recommend anybody adopt a greyhound anybody yeah that's wonderful so you you um you went to Gap. Yes. How did you find the experience of uh, of adopting through Gap? Oh, very good. They're very helpful, uh, and especially when I the first thing I did was make a phone call, and the call obviously went through to Shepherd, and I can't remember the lass's name I spoke to, but the time she spent talking to me and me explaining to her about how. Uh, the, uh, being an older couple, plus I had a grandson that was on the spectrum. So, you know, we knew the kind of dog that we did to spend so much time going through. And then a few weeks later, I got a call saying, Beryl, I think we've come across a greyhound that would probably fit in with you. So, and the main arrangements for me to go to Tullamarine and meet and greet. And heart just melted there and then. You know, so, so it was a, a good first meeting, good a good start to the relationship. Well, yeah, yeah. Staff was great the way they sort of explained everything to us. Yep. That's great to hear. So let's talk about Cannon for a minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, racing name was Aston Cannon, and you've stayed with Cannon. Yeah. Um, what sort of a dog have you got there? Well, how, how is Cannon behaving or not behaving, as the case may be? You couldn't wish for an animal to behave any better. In fact, my, my adult daughter was a bit concerned when she first came out. She said, Mum, she said, you sure he's well? He's sleeping an awful lot. I said, that's what greyhounds do. He is just unbelievably well behaved. He got quite excited when Daniela, I'm sure he must have known her from Tullamarine, I may be wrong, but he got quite excited because he's good when people come, but not as excitable as that. But apart from that, no, he just, 
lays around, you know, goes outside when it's time to go down the back, you know, but no, I couldn't, I couldn't find a fault with him, couldn't find a fault at this stage. Yep, works, walks well on the lead when we go out, him and I, I take him out 15 minutes morning and evening, you know, so no, no I really can't say there's anything that I can fault with him at this stage. Yeah. About taking over your furniture, have you found that uh, you need an extra lounge suite or an extra bed? Or he's, uh, for some reason, there's the back bedroom. Back bedroom is the particular one, and he's very clever because the door doesn't lock properly. He knows to push it with his hip. <laughs> and for some, I, I I lost him, and I thought, where is he? I raced around the backyard to check everything was locked. I couldn't find where he was, and he was in the back bedroom. Pushed the door shut. And he was on the bed up in the back bedroom. Yeah. And actually, people over the road from us, they've got one too. And he said, asked the same thing. And he said, we had to finish up letting him have the spare back bedroom. <laughs> oh, that bed. Yeah. <laughs> We've often joked that we should sell furniture when we adopt greyhounds because yeah. <laughs> I think we'd, we'd make a killing out of double beds and couches. <laughs> Has Cameron got any very strange habits, any unique? talents or habits that uh, that you've noticed, apart from being able to navigate through the bedroom doors? Uh, well, so nothing, he's just such a placid dog. Hmm. You know, it's just, it's as if he's sort of fitted in with this older couple. He likes to walk with me because I'm quite a few years younger than Hubby and poor Hubby probably sleeps as much as Cannon does. He just seems to have fitted in okay, you know. Hmm. Part of the family. No. And and what about feeding? I know that greyhounds can be very fussy with food. No, he's very good. I've done what they uh, said on the brochure about how I got the black hawk food for him, and I'm feeding him what they say on the um, on the packet that I feed him in the morning half and in the evening half, and I've been giving him because I've been practicing just seeing if he'll let me touch his teeth and that with a, a tissue of that, which is no drama. So now I'm going to get him the toothbrush and the... And you mentioned you have a grandson that's on the spectrum. They, yeah. Do they get on very well? Yeah. I showed <laughs> a lot of photo. It's like Daniela said to me, in hindsight, it's like I said to her, I probably did the wrong thing when I was young and my 45, 47 year old children had pets. Maybe I shouldn't have allowed them to be alone with pets as much as I did. Because now, yes, I, even though he's as placid as placid, it's like Daniela said to me, all dogs, you have to be aware, be careful. And I'm with them all the time. But my son came over and when he saw him with my grandson, he said, he couldn't believe it. I showed Daniela a photo of Cannon with um, my grandson. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Now, I also understand that you've also got a cat. No, no, I oh. had, we had a bird, which that surprised us. We were a bit concerned about the cockatoo in the cage outside. And it was suggested to me, maybe we keep the the cockatoo covered for a few days, which I, uh, Cannon couldn't even care that it's there. Couldn't even care that it's there. And as, as for, oh, well, at least now we've got Cannon, we'll be able to keep the birds off the porch. No, no, he doesn't care about the birds coming in on the porch, not at all. <laughs> Sounds like a very, very typical greyhound. It's um, it, they are, aren't they? They just um, uh, just go about life and take everything in their stride. Oh, yeah, amazing. <laughs> we must get some. See if we can get some vision of Cannon. We haven't haven't seen the mighty Cannon as yet. <laughs> can we get some a little bit of camera time for? Oh, look, what a beautiful dog. Isn't he handsome? Beautiful, magnificent colour. And Don't he is. Colour very often. Looks extremely happy and very, very comfortable. It's a wonderful story, Beryl, and I'd like to thank you for sharing it with us. Um, we'd like to, you know, share this information with a lot of people who are looking to adopt and thinking about a greyhound uh, and we get a lot of people saying they see a lot of them out there so there must be something going on with these dogs 
anybody that's watching this, please, please at least try, please. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. It was wonderful spending a bit of um, time with Beryl and uh, there was there were a few bits and pieces apart from that horrible head that had to crop up occasionally. Um, she had a, a, a real uh, dedication and, and love for, for, for Canon. And if I can just mention a lot of, uh, I've noticed we get a lot of questions about the transition between racing and adoption and, and, and how the dog might change. Canon, who you just saw, Aston Canon, was the, the racing name of that dog. Um, the son of Fernando Bale, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with Greyhound Racing, but Fernando Bale is one of the great greyhounds in the, in the, in the field of Greyhound Racing. Um, and Canon had 47 starts for five wins and 11 seconds. Um, but at four years of age, it's time for retirement. And that transition is made so much easier. And, um, and now Cannon's very, very happy on that very big, very fluffy cushion. Um, I think that uh, that said a lot, Larissa, about, um, about how the dogs move and transition from, from one life to another one very easily. Yeah, very much so. And that that um, Cannon hadn't been in a home before, so that's his his first experience at, at inside pet life. And you can see he he adjusted super quickly and really well. Absolutely. Now, if you'd like some more information about the stuff that we've been talking about today, and 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 information with much more detail, uh, the website gap.gov.au. I can't even. Blah, blah, blah gap.grv.org.au is a great resource for all things, everything to do with uh, the, the breed, the process of adoption, even things like we've spoke about earlier about fostering and, and, um, and volunteering. Uh, the phone number is also there on the screen. If you ring that, that's the number at Seymour. Um, please give them a call if you have any questions at all or of course gap at grv.org.au is the email address. Larissa do you have anything else that you'd like to add at this point? No I don't think so maybe we can throw it over to questions because maybe people have got some stuff they'd like to ask us about the adoption process or greyhounds in general. Absolutely Philippa has been keeping a close eye on the information coming in. What have you Philippa? Uh, yes, yeah, so one's come in saying, um, where could I get some more info on what I need to have at home before adopting, such as food, high bowls or low ones? Yeah, you can um, give us a call. The email that we send out when you're actually booked to meet a greyhound does have a lot of information about diet. Um, you don't need to use raised feeders. Um, I mean, they're great if you've got them, but it's absolutely not necessary. A bowl on the ground is completely fine. Cool. That's the only question that's come through, unless there's something else that uh, anybody else wanted to bring up. It's not too late, folks. If you'd like to um, pop a question in now, I'm sure we can uh, we can answer any queries you have. Any chance? Any advice on doggy doors for greyhounds? Yes, you absolutely can get them and you absolutely can train a greyhound to go through a dog door. But if they're big enough for a greyhound, they're big enough for a human. So it's just whether or not that's going to make the house, <laughs> house no longer secure. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you? Um, what's grooming like, including bathing? Yeah, greyhounds actually are supposed to be a hypoallergenic breed. Um, they have a really fine coat. Um, you certainly don't need to brush them. You can groom them with a soft mitt, um, but not a hard brush. Um, washing them, you, you really don't need to do very regularly. They don't have, tend not to have that doggy smell um, that, that most dogs have. 
Um, if you've got a washer, it's easiest just to either pop the dog in the shower with you um, or if it's warm, do him outside under a hose. They're generally really easy to wash. They're used to being closed off after they've, they've had a trial or had a race. Yeah, uh, Michelle's asked, are any of the greyhounds suitable to live with a four-year-old? Yeah, so the youngest we all, we, you'll ever see on our website is kids five or older. Um, and the reason for that is that, that what we discussed earlier about greyhounds as a rule, not liking being disturbed when they're laying down. And that can be really hard to explain to little children. We certainly do adopt into homes with kids younger than five. Um, as long as we're confident that the situation could be safely managed so that um, the dog's not put in a situation where he may bite um, and the, the child isn't going to get hurt. So it's really just a management issue. You need to be able to supervise or separate. So, but if you've got a four-year-old, look for any of the dogs that say kids five or over. Yeah. Uh, Nick has asked, should you get a bed before due to pricing or weight? And also how often should you give them a wash or shower? Uh, yeah, with, look, with regards to bedding, even if you've just got an old doona or an old sleeping bag, as long as it's soft, um, the dog will be happy. So you really, I mean, there's so many lovely fancy beds you can buy. You don't need to go to that expense um, if you don't want to. Um, most people probably do buy, have the bed ready for when the dog comes home. Um, so as to how far in advance you buy it, that's up to you. And washing, you wouldn't want to wash him any more than once a month. Um, and we normally recommend leaving it longer than that if, if you can, unless the dog is rolled in something disgusting or something like that. Um, they really don't need, need washing a lot at all. Yeah, uh, Nathan has got a couple of questions. So first one is, as a full-time worker, other than taking the weekend off, is it recommended to take extra time off to help settle in a greyhound or best just to get back into a normal routine to help them adjust? Yeah, that's actually a great question and something I probably should have touched on. Um, no, we absolutely don't recommend that you take any time off when you bring your greyhound home. The weekend is, is completely fine. Um, it's best to bring your new dog home into what is going to be a normal routine for you. So if you're normally not around during the day, that's what, what he needs to adjust to. And the quicker he does that, the better. So. Um, definitely don't take take a week off or anything like that. If you have the dog with you constantly for that first week, he's likely going to develop issues with separation anxiety when you go to leave him. Um, so getting him on a Friday or a Saturday, being home for Sunday and then back to work on Monday is completely fine. Uh, the second question is uh, also if you live in a unit with a reasonable size courtyard, some dogs are advertised as being apartment friendly. Is this important if there's there is inside outside access or is it more intended for people in apartments with no outside exit access? Yeah correct a unit with a little courtyard is just a little bit different because at least the dog has got some outside access so again we'd be looking for a dog who um, certainly was was lower energy any of the sort of more active dogs are probably not going to enjoy being in an environment where they're in an apartment or in a, a unit with only access to a courtyard and they may become destructive um, because they're bored um, the only thing with the courtyard is you just have to take care in summer because they, they're an area that can get really hot and greyhounds do really feel the heat. So you just have to make sure that there's plenty of shade or the dogs do have access to, to getting back inside where it's cooler. Cool. Um, Sharon has asked, if you work away from home, oh, hold on. if you work away from home part-time, is it not recommended to adopt? No, absolutely not. Most of our adoptees work full-time. Um, so there's no, no issues with you going off to work. Um, most of us have to work for a living, so there's no problems with that at all. Uh, and Michelle's asked, how do greys go travelling in the car? Usually greyhounds travel really well. Um, right from when they're a, a, a young dog, a puppy, they are carted all over the place. Um, so generally, um, they'll hop on the back seat and they'll go to sleep. Um, usually travel beautifully. Uh, Corey has asked, uh, can a greyhound wear a harness comfortably during walks or would you suggest just the collar that gap provide as most suitable? Yeah, uh, you certainly can use a harness. Um, personally, um, I, I don't like them um, because you're trying to control the dog from his strongest point, which is his chest, um, as opposed to a collar or a um, halty, which is, the halties actually go around their head um, and control the dog from his nose, which is his weakest point. 
So if you do have a dog who's who's quite strong to lead, definitely a halter is a better option than a harness. With the harness, you're just really giving him, him something to throw himself into and, and pull against. Yeah. Um, what about retractable leads? Yeah, another really good question. No, we hate retractable leads. They're really dangerous. Um, if you just Google injuries from retractable leads to see what they can do. Um, if they wrap around um, a child's leg or arm or even your own leg and arm and the dog takes off, um, you can get really serious injuries. And the same for the dog if it gets wrapped around his legs. And because greyhounds have, they don't have a lot of body fat, so there's not a lot of protection around their legs. So if you can imagine something really fine wrapping around it and the dog moving off quickly, it's going to do a lot of damage. Plus, if your dog gets a fright and takes off and you drop the lead, um, he's going to be terrified because there's going to be this thing, big thing clunking along behind him, which is only going to scare him even more. So, no, we, we absolutely don't recommend retractable leads. Uh, does GAP provide instructions on how to use a martingale collar? We do. The martingales can be really tricky. Um, if you're not used to them, they can be a bit challenging to adjust. So we absolutely we show you how to put them off, off, put them on, how to take them off, and how to adjust them. Cool. Uh, Chloe's just asked. Um, I have read that it isn't safe for a grey to wear a martingale collar at home. Uh, should only be worn on walks. Is this correct? And if so, is it recommended to have a normal collar to wear around the house? Yeah. Look, it's personal preference. Uh, any sort of collar is a choking risk. Um, the dog can potentially get tangled in something, whether he's got a martingale collar on or a flat collar. Um, that being said, our dogs always have collars on and we've never had a dog catch the collar on anything, um, either in foster care or in the kennel environment and hurt himself. Um, so look, that's its personal preference as to, to what you choose to do. Awesome. Uh, that's all the questions that I can see. I'll just quickly make sure I haven't missed any. Uh, no, I think that's it, unless there are any others, but that's all. Fantastic. That's great. Thank you, Philippa, and thank you, Larissa. Um, I'd just like to go back a couple of slides to the to the points of, where, you know, when you're a greyhound owner, when you are obsessed with buying clothes <laughs> and accessories. I have never seen a breed that has more clothing available and more options and more different types of knits and it, and it's a it's wonderful to get amongst a, a crowd of greyhound owners and and watch them comparing wardrobes not for themselves but for their greyhounds it's it's absolutely marvelous i love the breed and i'm sure we all do can't Thank forget, you, um, for, you can't forget the shoes as well phil can't oh, forget the, the little shoes. how dare oh, you the, and the collars and the oh it's just never the ended. snoods the snoods it's yeah. wonderful and the dogs just carry it off beautifully the noble breed thank you everybody for uh, for attending tonight i hope you've learned a lot and again if you'd like to know any more information there is a lot more information available on the gap.grv.org.au website and um, send us an email. We would uh, would love to hear from you and love to answer your questions. Uh, as you can tell, we're very passionate about this breed and we're, we're very keen to pass on the message. Thank you again, all for coming tonight. Thank you, Larissa, Tristan, and thank you, Philippa. And um, if you do adopt a gray, I'm, I know you'll love it. Thank you and good night.